All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS season. We're going to be kicking it off here with the Greenbrier Classic, now known as a military tribute at the Greenbrier. Got to update these two on the um, on the ends here, the weekly and the total. I just thought I would carry it over into this season just for this video. And then after this week, we'll start updating those once again. Um, but this week, it should be a pretty fun one. There are a ton of value plays there. Um, just an insane amount. A lot of people from the Corn Ferry Tour last year are going to be playing in this event. So that's going to be kind of fun and exciting to look at. And we'll jump right into that. But first, let's get the course overview. All right. So for this one, we're going to be targeting players that have really strong ball striking, total driving, and stroke scan as always. We're going to be looking at stroke scan putting. We do want some accurate drivers because you can lose strokes driving. But also, we're going to be looking at... Um, strokes gained approach and then strokes gained specifically in the 125 to 150 range so those are going to be the stats that we're going to be looking at total there are some players that are really popping um, if we look at those stats now obviously the people on the high end we got Victor Hovland, Jason Kolkrak, Bryson DeChambeau those ones are obvious, Sun J M. Um, but also you go a little bit lower there's some people that are surprisingly catching my eye uh, Seb Straka is one of those guys uh, Adam Shank and then Ryan Armour and then also we got Joel Dahman there um, but let's get into the picks for this week. All right, so get into the picks for this week. I do th really like the high end side here. There's a ton of actually really strong plays in the high end. Um, Bryson DeChambeau, obviously, he's kind of in a class of his own. And you got Victor Hovland, who's just been a stud. If you look at his uh, PGA Tour starts, and then also if you look at his Corn, Fer uh, Corn Ferry uh, Tour starts, those have also been really good as well. Jason Kolkrak obviously had a great year last year and is very strong as well. Actually helped us cash uh, that last week there, but 22 out of 23 make cuts. I do really like that. Um, he did finish T3 here last year as well. Bubba Watson just has great course history here. Uh, Sanjay M should be a really strong play. He's also one of the better staff hits in the field. Uh, we kind of know with Sanjay M as long as he doesn't uh, overplay or overextend himself, he's going to be you know a fine play. Uh, Joaquin Neiman here, T5 and a T29 in his last two starts here. Also one of the better staff fits here. Uh, top 25 in strokes gain approach. Uh, he's top 30 in total driving and ball striking and 41st in uh, strokes gain total. Once again, Scott Piercy, one of the best staff hits in the field, top five. You guys were used to hearing me say that last year. He finished T74 here last year and then T39 the year before that. Uh, Russell Henley is another play where he just has a ton of great course history, a top 10, a T5, and a T5 in his three starts here. Um, you know, I do worry about that recent form. Other than, you know, his last six starts, he, he didn't have a good year. He did end on a strong note. Scotty Scheffler here, he was a beast on the Corn Fair Tour. If you just look him up, you'll see a bunch of strong finishes, and that's why he's priced up at that price point. He should be in for a really strong season. He could easily win Rookie of the Year. Uh, Keegan Bradley, I do like him as a play. T13, T50, and T29. Three made cuts here. Pretty much the thing with Keegan Bradley is don't play him in a major, and you'll do pretty well. He is a guy that's a really strong staff fit here as well. He's the top five staff fit for me again this week. If he gets it going with his putter, he's going to have a strong week. That's kind of how it rolls with Keegan. If he sucks putting, it could be a rough week, but if he gets it going, he could easily top 10. All right. Russell Knox, I just feel like he could easily go out and dominate this course. Um, he doesn't have any course history, but he is really good at the stroke scan approach. He's the accurate driver. Um, he does get it done ball striking and total driving. Uh, top 60 in both of those stats. These, these stats are from last year as well, just pointing that out. Danny McCarthy, we know from last year, he's one of the best putters on the PGA Tour. Last year, he actually finished as the best putter. Um, not a bad play this week. I don't love it. Um, Joel Diamond's a play that I do like a little bit more. T5 here last year. He's typically been a cut maker. Decent staff hit. Top 20 in the field. I don't mind that as a play. Tom Lewis. So he is top 60 in the world golf ranking. He actually won the Tour Championship on the Corn Ferry Tour. This guy has been playing some pretty deep and decent golf. My only worry with him is, you know, he travels a lot. But I th he's going to be playing on the PGA Tour a lot more this year. At that price point, I think that's going to be a strong GPP play. Kramer Hickok, he's another guy that you know ended the year pretty well on the Corn Ferry Tour. He made some splashes last year on the PGA Tour, but this is a course that should fit his style of play. Seb Straka, top five staff fit this week. Um, he's a guy that you know ended the year pretty decent on the PGA Tour. He had some spotty um, miscuts there, but other than that, performed pretty well. I really don't mind this GPP play. Like I said, he is a top five staff fit this week. 
but he could be um, just one of those guys where he's a good staff fit, but for some reason he just doesn't make the cut. Um, Ryan Armour I do like as a play. I feel like this seems safe. He's an accurate driver. Um, he has good course history here thus far. It just seems like a safe and easy play. Um, kind of same with David Hearn. So David Hearn and Ryan Armour, they're both accurate drivers. Uh, Hearn hasn't missed a cut here in his last three starts, a T30, a T14, and a T2. Like I said, he's 13th in driving accuracy. Ryan Armour was 4th. Ryan Armour finished T21, a missed cut in T22. So both those guys are kind of just guys that should make the cut. All right, going a little bit lower here, uh, Lanto Griffin. He's a guy that played pretty well on the uh, Latino American Tour, but he also played pretty well on the Corn Ferry Tour. You know, really not a bad GPP play at that price. I don't mind it uh, too much. Um, but this whole section is pretty good. We got Bryce Garnett, who, as you guys know, we've played him quite a bit down the stretch uh, last year. Don't mind that play. He did have a miscut here last year. Same thing with Sam Ryder. Um, but Sam Ryder is one of the better stat fits in the field. He's a top 10 stat fit this week. I think he's going to be a strong play. Um, like I said, though, I do kind of worry about the miscut from him and Bryce Garnett. Kevin Chapel, I do. I'm pointing this out because he's three for three, but I, you know, those starts have been um, a long time ago, so that's kind of skewed there. Um, I don't like that play. I just kind of want to point that out so you guys don't get like uh, misdirected there. Uh, Doc Redmond was a rookie last year that had a pretty decent year. I don't love this play too much. Definitely gonna be more of a five percent GPP play for me if I end up playing him. Brian there, uh, I don't mind this play. I don't love it, though. He is a really accurate driver. He's kind of a plotter. Uh, he can put the ball where he wants to. So if the course is playing like how we think it will, he should be able to make the cut. J.J. Spawn has good course history, a T13 and a T29. He's another guy that you know had some stretches of some really good golf last year. Um, kind of was a surprise last year. He, you know, The year before that, he had a really poor... Uh, showing so it was nice to see him play well last year. Uh, maybe can you know continue that into this year. Nate Lashley, kind of surprising at this price point. This is a guy that won you know a tournament last year. He also kind of came out of nowhere, but he's a pretty decent staff hit. Yes, he hasn't played well recently. I guess recently in quotes, um, but I just like him at that price point. You know, I'm not going to go too crazy with him, but maybe 10, 20 percent ownership on him in tournament lineups. Roberto Castro, I'll touch on him in a second here um, when I bring up some core plays. Harris Inglis is another play that I like. Guy was a cut maker last year. He did have a missed cut here last year and the year before that at T29, so we don't love that, but pretty decent staff fit. Don't mind it. Hank Lebiota was a guy that we played quite a bit early on in his um, season last year, and then he really fell off, which was kind of worrying. He did have a decent finish at that Tour Championship on the Corn Fair Tour. Uh, but I don't think I'll be playing him. I don't think I'll be playing Peter Molinati, who I played quite a bit down the stretch. Peter Molinati has made two straight cuts here, though. Johnson Wagner finished T65, missed cut, and T32 in his last three starts here. Not a horrible stab fit. 40th in that driving accuracy. 4th in that 125 to 150 strokes gain approach stat that we're looking at. Uh, Brandon Todd's a play that I kind of do like as well. Kind of He was more of a corn fairy tour guy that played you know pretty decent. Don't mind that play. DJ Trahan, he was a guy that we played quite a bit last year as well. I do want to mention, sorry, let me go back real quick. Brandon Todd did have a T6 finish here in 2015, but getting back to DJ Trahan, he was a guy that we played pretty good amount before he got injured, and then once he got injured, it took him a while to get back, and then we kind of played him again. So he typically is a pretty accurate driver. I don't mind this play. He does get done uh, total driving as well. Um, definitely worth a GPP play. Tyler Duncan, T39 finish here last year. He's also an accurate driver, uh, 14th in that. He's top 50 in total driving and ball striking as well. Don't mind him at that price point. Scott Harrington's a guy that played pretty well down the stretch of the Corn Ferry Tour as well. Uh, Mark Harbord, um, he made seven straight cuts at the Corn Ferry Tour. I sh should mention Harrington made four straight cuts in a row now on the Corn Ferry Tour. So that's I'm bringing up the Corn Ferry Tour stuff because those are the most recent events that we have to look at, and a lot of these guys have played on the Corn Ferry Tour. <clears throat> Wes Roach here is kind of an interesting price point because this is a guy that, you know, really had a strong year at the end of the year, and I'm just pretty surprised that he's that low of a value play. Now I know that's because, or I believe that's because he struggled on the Corn Ferry Tour there at the end, um, but he's a pretty decent staff at Acker, driver, 
Good at total driving in ball striking. Don't mind that play. George McNeil here. Um, if you have to dip lower, you can dip down to him. I don't love that play, but that's kind of the last of the plays I would go with if I have to. Um, but let's try to finish out this uh, GPP build for you, and then we'll get into the core GPP, not the core GPP plays, but the GPP plays that I want to highlight. Um, like I said, this is just going to be a GPP lineup. Just kind of want to put one out there. Probably won't even play this, but just kind of getting the ideas out there of which GPP plays I like and which ones I don't. All right, let's just plug someone in there. All right, that's what we're going to go with. All right, now let's get into those uh, top GPP plays. All right, so Adam Shank here. This is kind of more of a price point play. I just really like the price. Um, he did have a miscut here last year, which we don't like. That's why he's a GPP play, not a core play. But it's a play that I want to highlight because he is a top 15 stat fit. So we look at the stats. He's 55th in total driving, uh, T35 in ball striking, 56th in strokes game total, 33rd in strokes game putting, 41st in that 125 to 150 stat that we're looking at. Then he was also uh, 76th in strokes can approach so pretty good if he can keep that drive accurate he's going to have a good week now when we look at recent form and i had that asterisk because you know it's not really recent but this is kind of where they left off this season so t24 miscut t18 and t6 now we had to take that with a grain of salt obviously everything that i said in the video before this with in regards to recent form we kind of have to take it with a grain of salt because most of these guys haven't played for a while the ones that have are the guys on the corn Ferry tour that you know i've been playing against lesser caliber players not pga tour pros uh, so let's get all right so another top gpp play of mine is gonna be roberto castro this week he's probably gonna be my favorite value play he is a top 25 stat fit this week and he does have five straight made cuts so recent form um it's pretty decent um but the thing I like the most about him is going to be his stat fit. So he's an accurate driver, um, 36th in that, 29th in strokes gain approach, T6 in that 125 to 150 stat that we're looking at, and he's also 96 in strokes gain total. So really not a bad play at this price point. All right, the last one that I want to touch on is going to be Mark Hubbard. Um, so he has made seven straight cuts on the Corn Ferry Tour, and we can kind of use that as actual kind of data, I guess, if you will, because that is pretty much recently. Um, the thing that I like about him as well is he does have course experience here. He has made two cuts here at this course. Now, they're not great finishes. Typically, I like to see a T30 finish or better, but still, I like the fact that he has played this course. All right, that's all I have for you guys in today's video. If you like this video, please give a like and subscribe. You know, I do want to mention we do have that uh, PGA DFS membership available for you guys, $5 a month. We had a really successful season last year, and we're going to look to continue that success this year. All right, guys, let's keep cashing. Thanks.